Okay, now not sure how you feel about fiddleheads. Fiddleheads. So maybe you've never tried them. Maybe you're not sure how to prepare them. Check out Chef Paul Lilicus as he takes us out to the country in search of this wild spring vegetable. We are here in the great outdoors. It's late spring. It's the perfect time for some fiddlehead foraging. So I'm here with my trusty friend Ellen, our companion Uba. We're going to walk along the river and find some. So we're right here by the water. This is the perfect place where the ostrich fern grows. As you can see, and fiddleheads are the unfurled sprout of this plant. Now, these ones are in exposed sunlight, so they're a little bit too tall. We're going to follow the river and look for some shorter ones today. So this is perfect. As you can see, we're slightly more shaded, and as such, there are much, much shorter ferns here. So this one's perfect. I'm going to pick over here. As you can see, they're shorter than 15 centimeters. That's great, and there are about seven or eight per plant here, so I'm only gonna harvest three. You never wanna take more than 50% of the ferns because that will kill the plant. So sometimes I like to just rub a little bit of that paper off here while we're in the woods. Just saves on cleanup later. And of course, you never forage on somebody else's property, right, Ellen? Correct, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> So now that we've got our fiddleheads back home, we've given them a good rinse. You can do this once or twice if you need to. And now we're going to take them to the fire and give them a blanch. These need to be cooked in order to make them safe to eat. So you want to give them a good boil for about 8 to 10 minutes, and then we're going to shock them in some cold water. So now that the cooking process has stopped, we're going to take these right to a salad spinner, give them a nice spin so we don't have any water in them. These are kind of like little mops, you know? They, they soak up sauces, but they also soak up water. So we want to make sure they're nice and dry. So you can see it's caramelizing just a little bit. Perfect. Oh, aren't these cute? They're like spring steak sandwiches. Okay, it's time to taste. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for foraging with me. Fiddlehead Spring Recipe Chef Paul joins me in studio. Thanks for having me back. Always good to have you back. Always good to be here. And so foraging is a thing. Yeah. Like you go out there and Every you went year. up to your cottage. Yeah. And where do you where do you find these fiddleheads? So we find them along river bends. They grow in forests. They're really, really common. And they're just okay. the little unfurled fronds of the ostrich fern. It's a really common plant. So it's a common plant, but if it's already turned into the into the fern, then it's you, you can't eat it no, anymore. No. It's once, over. Once it's a fern, it's a fern. So the season's pretty short. So I like to take advantage of it every year for yes. about the two weeks that you can. Two weeks, everyone. Yeah. That's why everyone freaks out when it's fiddlehead season. That's fiddlehead right. season is two weeks. That's right. They keep a little bit longer once they've been picked in refrigeration. You can yes. buy them in markets, but I like to go out, get them fresh. Everything's better fresh, right? I think it's amazing that you forage. I mean, you look so clean and tidy, and there you are in the forest with like a basket and you're foraging. I think it's beautiful. Thanks. Okay, so we're going to make a quiche. Yeah, and what I brought in here, I've already uh, prepped these fiddleheads. You know, they've okay. already been blanched and shocked and dried in the spinner, like you saw in the video. Ooh, they look so good. And and now we're just going to make a very simple but delicious and elegant sort of brunch recipe. Nice. So it all starts with a frozen store-bought crust. And as you can see, I had a little crust crisis this morning. Mine cracked a little bit, yeah. and it shrunk a little bit. Did it crack? See, I didn't see a crisis at all. But, but you know, <laughs> I'm going to show you. There's, there's no reason to not use this crust. What you can do is you can just use a little bit of the egg white mm -hmm. and just sort of seal that up, throw it back in the oven, and that'll keep it from sticking. OK, all right. So you can actually you can fix the boo-boos. Exactly. OK. <laughs> and with the, with the ingredient you're already using for the recipe. Good. And also, it's shrunk a little bit here, and that's OK. All we're going to do is we're going to dial everything in the recipe back just a little bit. So this recipe calls for six eggs, we're gonna use five eggs. It calls mm -hmm. for, you know, three quarters of a cup of whipping cream, we're gonna just dial it back a little bit and then dial back the salt just a little bit to account for that. Got it, okay, all so, right. So, we've got our eggs here and we're just gonna give them a nice whip. You wanna give me some heavy cream there? You want in here? Yeah, right in. So here's my question. If you've, I don't know how many of you have actually tried fiddleheads, I haven't. Would you say it's like an asparagus? Type? Totally. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Right. That's, That's what exactly it looks what like I tell to me. people. And they're like little mops for flavor. Got it. So you I'm going to take add, it all in. Yeah, I'm going to add some salt here, very yeah. important. And a nice salty cheese. So you can use a Gruyere or Asiago yeah. here. We want the whole thing? Uh, yeah, let's go for it. Okay, let's do it. A nice, oh, it smells good. Yeah, and a little bit of black pepper. You want to just You can't go wrong some. with the Gruyere. Enough? Yeah, a little bit more. There you go. Perfect. 
And now, into our prepared crust. And can you grab the fiddleheads there? Yes. What we're gonna do is we're gonna just start placing them on. So this has to be done in a particular fashion. Well, I mean, you want to see them. I can't just their, throw them in the... It's their shape that makes them special, right? Oh, so you're going to... Okay, got it. I think. Yeah. <laughs> just sort of like press them in. Maybe okay. 16 or two dozen. Yeah. And then... I'm overly generous. Yeah, I mean... Here, and then every single... but dump yes. a few in. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, and it couldn't be more simple than onto a sheet pan, sheet pan yeah. in case of any spillage, right. and into a 375 degree oven, 70 for about half an hour. Amazing. Yeah. And then you've got a quiche. Then you've got, you've got a quiche, and, yeah. and when it comes out of the oven, it comes out, end up with something that looks like this here. That's beautiful. Very elegant. That is so elegant. beautiful. And you, it's important, and let it rest. Yes. So you yeah. can do it right away no. because the the. Tail sign for when it's ready to tail sign is that it still jiggles just a little in yes. the center, just a little right of that. Yeah. It'll come right of that. But cook while it's cooked. I say wait 15 minutes before you slice into that thing. That totally makes sense. So yeah. what an easy recipe, and I think you know it's really good if you want to slice in and, and plate it up. Absolutely. I think it's great that Ooh. you can sort of rotate the vegetables that you use all the time. I get stuck using the same veggies over and over again. Yeah. So it is nice when something new comes into season. Incorporate that into your diet. Totally. It could be asparagus. You know, yeah. you could do a nice onion quiche, nice, just with oh, a bunch yes. of chives is really nice in the spring. Love it. Yeah. I love all quiches all the time. Recipe at cityline.tv. Thank you, you Chef it. Paul.